All right, we're going to ask uh, uh, who, who, anybody here hasn't sung that, that can sing? That's why I threw that in there. Brother, Brother Clarence, I know he sung once, but I like your Brother Clarence. He, I like Brother Clarence. I tease him a lot, but he's a good singer. I really like to hear him sing. I even like the songs he writes. Amen? Come on up, Brother. Amen. Let's all say praise the Lord. Praise Lord, praise Lord, praise Lord, praise Lord. I don't have much of a voice between the allergy and uh, praising the Lord last night. It's just about gone, so I really didn't want to get up here and make a fool of myself. But uh, I don't want to tell the Lord no. I'm trying to find this one song. I, I'm, I got this one song on my heart, but I'm going to need help singing it. Is, are you guys going to help me sing it? The name of it is God's Church is a Giant. You look around, you say, what do you mean God's Church is a Giant? Look at us. We're a spiritual giant. We're not a fleshly giant. We're a spiritual giant. I was thinking about little David. Little David was the smallest of all of his brothers. But God chose him. And David, not his brothers or anybody else, slew the giant. Because he was God's little spiritual giant at that time. Then I think about Gideon and what God did with Gideon. You know, he, he started out with 32,000 soldiers to go against 120,000. And then he started going downhill. And I'm thinking, you're going the wrong way. You need to be going up. I'd be afraid of going against that many. With, and he went all the way down to 300. And they never even had to lift a sword. God did all the battle. And he'll do all the battle for us today if we just stick with him. God's church is a giant, but we have to look at it in the spiritual sense and not the flesh. These, these uh, big denominal world uh, churches, they look big, but they don't have the power. And the power is with the Holy Ghost, and that's what we have. <clears throat> and I'm serious, I'm going to need help. God's church is a giant God's church is a giant Powerful and strong Told you I was going to need help. We've faced opposition, but we're still marching on. Some have grown weary and taken their ease. But it's time to wipe the sleep from our eyes and stand to our feet. Wake up, sleeping giant, and stand to your feet. We're living in the closing hour, and it's too late to sleep. There's work in the harvest we must quickly do. Wake up, sleeping giant, our Lord's coming soon. Samson was mighty, filled with great power. Raised up to judge Israel at a much crucial hour. But at a time of great weakness, he had fallen asleep. He slept too long 
found his strength gone as he suffered defeat. Wake up, sleeping giant, and stand your feet. We're living in the closing hour, and it's too late to sleep. There's work in the harvest. We must quickly do Wake up sleeping giant Our Lord's coming soon Wake up sleeping giant Our Lord's coming soon Good job, Brother Clarence. Good job. Praise the Lord. It's been requested for Sister Marilyn and the twins to sing. Amen. We thank God for them. Praise the Lord. Twins. Yeah. Yeah, there's only one set of twins in here that I know of. Well, I'm sorry. There's only one set of identical twins in here. They're not identical? All right, I'll just hush. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. All right. Praise you, Lord. Yes, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. It's raining outside. I believe it can rain in here a little bit. Praise the Lord. God is good. He's never done me nothing but good. I am blessed. I think of a... a I was reading an article, and it had this in here that says, Don't fear tomorrow. He's already there. You know, and I believe that. He's gone before us. He's walked through many hard times. He had nails in his hands and in his feet. I have never suffered anything like that. And I know that he's going to be there in my tomorrow. We're going to try to sing this song. I know I'll probably get emotional. I won't be able to get through it. Uh, Brother Randall, he likes this song too. He and A, did I mention? And the words to this chorus says how I feel. David sang the praises of the glory of Jehovah. Paul preached that all is lost. Knowing Christ, little John said, He is precious. By leaning on his bosom, so for a moment, may I humbly testify. Did I mention?
I love him. That's all I want to say. <laughs> my, my, my. There's a lot in that. Thank God. That's all I want to say. Some people's got a lot of things to say, but really when it gets right down to it, I love him. That's all I want to say. Amen. He's a good God. You will just love the Lord, amen, and you trust the Lord, and you allow God to lead you and guide you, friend. You'll make it all right. And in the end, it'll all. I'm trying to figure who had. I guess I think I've just about had everyone, praise the Lord, to sing or testify. I hope I haven't forgot any. I think I asked Brother Lauren. Now, he's going to be leaving out. When are you leaving out, Brother? Tomorrow around 10. Well, we better get you up here now then. Praise the Lord. Come up and testify. Leave your testimony. Praise the Lord, Church. I, I asked the Lord why uh, um, I need to say what I need to talk about. And, and uh, I was thinking about this, how how to te testify about how I c came to the United States. Uh, you see me here, and I think uh, the things were easy for me. But uh, first, first thing, I'm going to testify how I was Catholic when I came to the United States. Uh, I was running and uh, crossing the border for 14 hours, no food, no drink. And I was saying, if the Border Patrol arrests me, I'm not going to be back to the United States. It's too hard to get into the United States. And I came to the United States, and I was dropped off in a, a parking lot, the grocery store parking lot. I, I knew no, no one in that city. I have no money. I was homeless, I was uh, with no money, no clothes, no English, no papers, no Jesus Christ. <laughs> yes, I was, uh, and I was for two weeks like that. And a Friday, <laughs> with no Jesus Christ, that was the most horrible thing that happens to my life. They invited me to the Church of Jesus Christ. And they were talking about Jesus Christ, how can, uh, that's a man that who can, right? And I had no hope at all. No food, no clothes, no money, no English, no papers, no job, no Christ, no Jesus Christ in my heart. None. And uh, when they invite me to, to make a prayer, then if I have faith, the Lord Jesus Christ could fix all my issues I had. 
have I speak zero English. You helped me with the English. <laughs> I can testify it. And um, I went to to the altar. They prayed for me. That that night after church service, there was a brother. Then I was asking for a person. Then uh, wants to work next day was a Saturday, and they asked me like I was gonna say no, you know. <laughs> and I went to work for. Uh, um, a house mowing the grass. I never, I don't even know how a mower machine looks like. And I remember that they were telling me a lot of things I, I, I don't, I don't understand. I didn't know nothing, none. And uh, then they, they, they want uh, the my boss to call an interpreter. People then will tell me. And uh, I'll make it too short. They, this uh, boss on Monday took me to the INS and fixed my status. And I, I became a resident of the United States. Then I became an uh, American citizen. Uh, I was legal. I got a job. I started learning English. And when I came here and I see... You, I see the church of Jesus Christ, and it, I, I feel very blessed, very blessed. And, uh, and you were, uh, we call, when, when we're in Mexico, we call the United States the land of promise. Land of promise. That's what we call this land. We all, want, we all want to come to United States. Every single person in Mexico, they want to come to United States. Because they, we think, and that's, a, and, and if you, the, the, the main thing that, that happens to me in the United States, it's then I receive the Lord Jesus Christ. I baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive the Holy Ghost. I was filled with the Holy Ghost. That happens here in the United States of America. That's the most. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And um, well, I'm so blessed. And I would just want for you, you to realize how blessed you are. You were born in this land. You've been protected by the government, by, by the law. You, 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 you're in a very good place to live. America, United States of America. And I believe that the Lord has still mercy for this country. Because it's, it didn't happen only to me, to a lot of Mexicans. We come to the United States and we become, we become Christians. We receive the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to have a, just a little bit, maybe five minutes preaching. Because my English runs out. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, but I, I probably won't read the Bible. But you read the Bible and you know exactly what I'm going to be talking about. It's about when they were in the upper room. And after they, were, after they were praying and asking, everybody, all of them were full with the Holy Ghost. Yes, that's what we need to be asked. Then everybody gets full. But when the devil saw the church of Jesus Christ was full of the Holy Ghost, got power, he had no experience to destroy it. It's like a new toy for him. We, we were new for the devil almost 2,000 years ago. So he started looking at the church of Jesus Christ and figuring it out how to destroy the church. He has no experience back then. Now he's got a lot of experience. It took a lot of time for the devil to figure out how to break up and how to get into the, because they were united. Yeah, it, 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 the devil has no experience. Now it got a lot of experience. Got almost two thousand years of experience. When you when you apply for a job, they ask you for your experience. The more experience you have, the the best performance you're gonna do. And and the devil has almost two thousand. When he filled up the application, he said two thousand years of experience. <laughs> Oh, 2,000 years in how fast he can destroy the church of Jesus Christ. You have, you have no doubt about it. 
I remember my, one morning my wife, her name is Abelina, woke up and told me, the devil is terrible. I, I know that, but I said, no, this is, we don't know how terrible he is. He can destroy the church in a blink of an eye. The Lord just showed me how fast he can work, how much experience he has, and how fast he can break the church. You can be happy having communion with your brother or sister, and a minute later, it can be your worst enemy. Because the experience, he has to destroy the church. And she stood up on, on the pulpit and talked to the church in Matamoros. Says, if we don't turn for what we're doing right now, we're all going to go to hell. She said to the, the whole congregation, and I turned red because I wasn't that listed. <laughs> he said, all of us, all of us, because we're not awake how fast, how uh, the damage the devil can do to the church in just a minute. He can destroy the church because the experience he's got. He's got a lot of experience by now. So we have to fight him back. How can we fight him back? The church has to fight him back with fasting and praying. That's the only way. Uh, kneel, 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 kneel in praying and asking the Lord to have mercy of us. The church of Jesus Christ is the only church he wants to destroy. Yeah, he, he's not in, he, doesn't, he doesn't care about all other churches. About, you know, I don't want to name it, but they're, they're long. They're, he, he won't, he, it's not his job to destroy those. He's in our church. And if we don't wake up, we we gonna have a lot of issues, and we won't be instead of uh, helping the church to go smoother. And uh, I'll compare this. I try to put it together. Like we're in a boat, the church is like a boat, and we all have the right. Yeah. If you if you don't do your job, yeah. eh, it'll Take time to move. If you're just sitting there not doing your job, the church cannot go forward. If we don't turn our, way, our ways, then we're living right. The, the way we're going right now, the, it'll be too late for us when we see all the destruction, destruction, destruction then the devil can do to the church. It, 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 the devil has come against the church since the church was born in the upper room. And we are exactly the same church than there was in the upper room. The difference that we got right now is the devil with 2,000 years of experience. And it's, it's ready to destroy, destroy the church, the families. Uh, you, you can be, you can, uh, it, it is real bad what is going in the church right now. The family, mother, father, and, and child, children, they're in the church. But they're not in the same boat, not in the same church, not in the same faith. Everybody goes to different directions, and everybody and all of us, they, we think then when then we we we're right, then we got the Lord, and and we can see how danger, how the time is. I was say, I think, are we in the last days, or are we the worst Christians ever? Right? Can be either or. Huh? Because we fight, we, we have to be very careful what we talk. And brother, they can um, say, uh, give you a hug and praise the Lord. And, and that's just momentar momentarily. We have to turn from that way. It takes time. It took me about five years. 
I was in my bedroom praying and praying and praying because I I knew the Lord reveals me how much experience the enemy has against the church, against my family, against my ministry. He didn't have that much experience with Paul and Peter. They can, they, uh, uh, Apostle Pete, Peter, he, what sermon, how many people convert with one sermon? About 3,000 people. Now we need 3,000 sermons for one person. Yeah, it's, it, it, we, because of the 2,000 experience that the enemy has against us. A, a lot of experience. He got a lot of experience. Then he'll, the devil, the, our enemy, will let you come to the church, but won't let you have church. And I'm on his list. Uh, don't even ever think that the ministers and the pastors and the bishops, they're not in the devil list. We're uh, highlighted our names. <laughs> yeah, this is pray for us. Pray for us. We need to pray for our minister, our pastors. The church, when, when you're going to ID your, the church, the, the, the church of Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, when we hear a brother or sister, then it is, uh, it, they're talking like everything is wrong, nothing is right. Uh, that is a uh, sight. Then the devil is working on them. But you don't have to tell them, get out of here, you're the son of, of the devil or something like that. You have to pray and fast. For the brother, for the sister, so you can help him with to save his soul, because we are um, target for for uh, for the devil, and the devil wants to destroy us. But I know a man who can. <laughs> I, I amen, brother Bishop. <laughs> He's right. He's right. The devil's out to destroy the church. Amen. He can't do that. He can't destroy the whole church, but he can destroy us and get us out of church if we allow him. I, I like that. I like what he said there at one point about uh, Peter preached and got 3,000 people saved. And uh, now you've got to preach 3,000 messages to get one person saved. <laughs> How true that is. And we got a request, one more request here for a song and then. We're going to turn it over to Brother Jim. Was requested for Sister Megan to sing The Storm Passes By. All right. How many's ever had a storm in your life? And I'm not talking about one of them. We've all faces, have faced storms. But God can, he can calm those storms just like he did the natural ones. Amen. Why she's getting ready? Anybody want any message want to say anything before we close? All right, go ahead, sis. I'm thankful for being able to be here and I'm thankful that um, God healed me quickly of the well it was I tested positive for mono, but I got a fever one day and he the doctor said while well, I was I was contagious while I had the fever and I had the fever for one day and I'm just I'm so glad I didn't have it for a week or two he said it could have could have lasted longer and I told the nurse the next day I was like well, I haven't had a fever all day am I okay to go around people am I okay and this was yesterday I was supposed to go to work and uh, she was like oh your fever's gone already and I was like yeah and she was like what's unusual she's like yeah that's fine and uh, you know she put a note in and um, I'm just thankful it, it went by fast, and I was really tired yesterday, but I'm tired today, but it's, I feel a lot better, but um, I'm thankful for what I felt here. I'm thankful for God getting me through the storm that we've gone through, 
lately. And, uh, you know, it stinks really bad not to see. You know, I'm, I'm sitting over there right now, but I'm so thankful that me and Jake are here and uh, we have our church family to be with us. And um, there's a lot that's in my mind right now, but I'm just going to sing and listen to the words and sing with me and just praise God right now. they put. I appreciate Brother Troy helping me out uh, when I need him. I thank God for that. And you know, he's traveled a long ways to be here. And uh, we want him to know we appreciate that. And all, all your help. Amen. Praise him. In fact, I'd like to be just come up, maybe testify real fast. I ain't going to let him preach. <laughs> but uh, I want to at least say something. I, I do appreciate Brother Troy. He helps me a lot and uh, during this. And I, I thank God for that. But after that, Brother Jim, uh, you come on up and bring forth whatever God has given you. Better choice, Stavra. Let's go give him a good hand. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, I've got these CDs here I'll be signing after church back there. Yeah. You get two for the price of one tonight. I was kidding them back there. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Ain't that right, Sister Paula? He said I, didn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't preach. He didn't say I couldn't cut up a little bit, did he? <laughs> I love Bishop Spence and the, the home church here and a lot of good memories right here in this church. And uh, I told him tonight, I said, you know, the, the preaching's good, singing's good. And I said, uh, but I, I was thinking while I was singing last night, Sister Katie asked me what I lead out in some songs. I just done the best I could, but I was noticing Brother Jacob. It seemed like he was getting closer than, than I've seen ever seen him. He was as, as close, and you know, Brother Jacob, you just got to keep pushing on, amen, and pressing your way, amen. It's good to see Sister Kim here tonight, we have to be here today with us, and uh, amen. It's good to have Susan, amen. I want her to know we we, we love her, and, and my heart would just, I, I just wanted to really see her and, and uh, her be back in service with me. And I asked her, I said, would you come for me? And she said she would. She's here, and I thank God for that. And just appreciate God for everything he's done. Now, when this is all over, we'll go back to where we, uh, we, we've got a flight tomorrow, so pray for us on that, on that airplane. But, you know, when I step on there, I, I, I don't fear. I I don't let my mind run away with me, and, uh, you know, I, I know God's in control, amen. I don't know what holds the future, but I know who holds the future. Praise the Lord, and uh, I, I, uh, I've been having some problems in, with my sciatic nerve, and I, I appreciate Brother Rich for giving me those instructions. Uh, uh, i got to do some exercise. I think he was trying to tell me I'm too fat, and if I get that like <laughs> No, I'm kidding. It's actually Deanna that handed them to me. Rich is going, <laughs> let me tell you all that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But uh, I want to get that under control. Wish my wife could have been here. And, uh, she just sends her love. And she, she said, man, if I thought I'd been off all weekend, I'd have came anyway. But uh, she didn't know. And she fell on her work. And But uh, I miss Bishop and Sister uh, Rose. And I, I miss Bishop Pennington and Sister Pam. And uh, just, uh, you know, I wish Brother Stone could have been here. I, I just... It was a it was a good 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 having him here last year, and it, that's just three churches. And there's others. There was a brother Cobb there from Alabama was up here last year, and we we wish some way somehow we could have more contact with him and just kind of win him over to this way. Amen. I I don't know what sometimes uh, uh, you know I, I've never met brother Cobb before, but uh, I, I felt that kindred spirit. Amen about him and. Uh, I want to say I appreciate the the good report, Brother Bowen, and baptizing five. You know that's a that's a when I hear news like that, Amen. It just it does us it does us good, doesn't it? Good, Amen. And uh, 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 Sister Brooke, I want to I can't stress that enough. We every service we call her name out and uh, have prayer, and uh, as well as Sister Marilyn, and uh, we we just appreciate God for all of His multitude of benefits. Enjoyed camp. Appreciate Brother Jared, Amen, and Sister Karen, and. Uh, Miss Zoe, I, I just seem like I can hear her singing her song, amen, and uh, uh, just everyone that's here, and, and Brother Steve, we, we go back, way, way, way back, amen, and, uh, you know, there's not that much difference in age, but like I was telling uh, Sister Rochelle, I said, now me and Sister Essie, when, well, I may not say, ought to say this, but she was 16 and I was 17, <laughs> so all those that were four or five or six years younger than me, <laughs> which is not a lot, <laughs> but they were little kids, <laughs> and we were grown, <laughs> well, at least we thought we were, <laughs> praise the Lord, so by the time I was 18, we had, uh, there was Troy Lee and little Randy, and uh, you, you know, you just, you, you miss those times, and you, you think back, and uh, uh, when we first came here, the church was facing this way, hey man, he came in over there and just looking at the pictures down there and, and things and oh my, what what times we had and all the saints of God, now we mentioned a few current that passed within the last year but we go back and <laughs> while there's, I can still remember here, Brother Keller back here, you'd come in, he'd have them trucks stop and tracks and boy, he'd be handing them out when you come through the door, you, you got tracks when you come to church and Brother Keller, <laughs> praise the Lord. And Brother Lindell, he'd be hollering out, Brother uh, Bishop Spence was saying, I heard tape the other day, and you could hear Brother Lindell in the background, Amen, hallelujah, <laughs> praise him, glory. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. You get right on it, and he'd, get, he'd back you up on it. Right, 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 right. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's so good. Little Johnny, he's about that tall. You know, he looked... And then now we're looking at Micaiah and all the other ones, and I don't know. We think about Jeanette there and just how they've grown up and had families and everything. It don't make me an old man. It just makes me, 
you know, seen, I've seen a lot, amen. Bo was back there, he said, I remember that, I remember that. I started turning around and saying, yeah, you get no way from going. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I remember he was a little curly head, he looked like one of the Jackson 5, you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 I ain't lying. Christy showing him pictures. <laughs> Had an ass roll like that. <laughs> he, he's, he's cute as a speckled pup. Amen. Man, he can stand there and do a flip right in the middle of the air. He's a tough little old bird. I, I appreciate God. I appreciate Brother Johnny, Brother Pete, and all of them, and uh, Brother Harold. We don't get, I was telling Brother Harold today, we need to communicate more. He's got, he's got all that high tech stuff, and I, if you don't call me, then you ain't going <laughs> to. I'm a, I'm a talker, not a typer. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But uh, I've said enough. I appreciate Brother Jim and our acquaintances with him, and uh, hadn't, hadn't been around a whole lot with Brother Jim, but you know. Uh, we, we can just, there's a bond there, amen, and uh, we, we appreciate God for the message, amen. I told him, I said, you know, the, the truth, I said, when it's in the book, <laughs> you get out of the book, and it's going to ring because it's got a certain sound, <laughs> amen. I said, it's got a certain sound, praise the Lord. And who shall prepare her for the battle except the trump? Give a certain sound. Let's give the Lord a hand, praise the Lord. I enjoyed that. Say amen. All right. And I do appreciate Brother Bo and them, his church from Kingsport. We appreciate you all coming. Amen. You're always welcome. Amen. We just thank God for you. They've been a blessing to us. Amen. I enjoy Brother Bo's uh, ministry. Amen. And uh, so we just want to say we appreciate them being here also. And all of you. All right. This time we're going to turn the service over to our speaker tonight. Amen. Brother Jim Schumach. Amen. Praise the Lord. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Brother Jim. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Here we go. Glad to be here tonight. You? I, this morning, I had a hard time staying awake. I was over there yawning. Excuse me for doing that. I love the Lord. I'm glad I come. Uh, I told some of them, my wife, and I told Brother Glenn and Sister Sherry before they ever come up here, I said the first time we came uh, was about three years ago. I think it's been three years now. I said, uh, we fell in love with this church and with these people. And I mean that. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I told Bishop Spence today back there in the room, before we get into the message today, I want to sing, but uh, I told Bishop Spence in his office back there today, if I, if I thought or that he thought that I would do any of you harm or this church harm, I, I, I would never do that. It's not my intention is to ever hurt. Hallelujah. Kia G. Now I don't even know what I'm going to sing. I might sing that first song we sang the other day. I, I love that song because uh, I got a lot to look forward to when I get over there. Amen. I believe I got a mom and daddy over there because they was baptized right. Lived right. Amen. I'm trying to think of the name of the song. <laughs> Hallelujah. No. Hallelujah. We can do that. That's it, Brother Troy. You can help if you want. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Give me enough rope and I'll hang myself. <laughs> Somewhere just across the Jordan River is a place of everlasting joy and peace where the tree of life is blooming there forever. crown of life is waiting there for me that sounds 
like home to me, like where I want to be. There'll be no tears to fill our eyes again. Hills will echo with the story, how we sing. Oh, they say that there's mansions inside that city. A crystal river flowing by the tree of life. No more pain or disappointments there to hurt. Jesus Christ Himself will be the light that sounds like home to me, like where I want to be. There'll be no tears to fill our eyes again. Hills will echo with the story How we sing of His great glory Where the saints of God will be That sounds like home to me Oh, they say that there's mansions inside a crystal river flowing by the spring of life. No more pain or disappointments there to hurt us. And Jesus Christ Himself. Like where I want to be, there'll be no tears to fill our eyes again. The hills will echo with the story, how we sing of His great glory, where the saints of God will be. That sounds like home to me. Hallelujah. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Hallelujah. That sounds like home to me. You know, sometimes people, uh, before we get real deep into the Word, I don't know how deep we'll get, but before we get into the Word tonight, you know, sometimes people come around us. Uh, I'm talking about the church. And uh, they'll, come, they'll come into the church sometimes and even make it as far as the altar. But sometimes it stops there. And sometimes people will question, why do I need to go to church? Why do I need to go to church? Why do I need to come around? And... Uh, you know, I think about people in these situations, amen. They're looking for something. I believe everybody's looking for something. Even the people that's out there on drugs and alcohol tonight, they're looking for something. They're looking for something, Brother Johnny, to satisfy this flesh. But what we've got to realize tonight, this flesh is just temporal. Amen, this, this flesh is just here for a season. 
Amen. My father would stand up in church many, many times as I growed up. He wasn't a minister or anything like that, but he would stand up and he would testify a lot of times like Brother Randy does. Amen. And he would, I can remember so clear in my mind, he would testify about what the Word of God says. It says, life is but a vapor, it appeareth just for a little while, and then vanishes away. And I told somebody today, or yesterday, I said, I look at my hands now and back You know, 30, 40 years ago, I looked at my daddy's hands, amen, and my hands was a lot smaller then, but now I look at my hands and I see my dad's hands, amen. I'm getting to an an age now, Brother Bo, amen, Uh, my dad used to get out and work around the yard and and he was, uh, I was the baby, you might say, I had brothers 20 years older than I was, but he would get out and work in the yard and about the age that I am now and amen, a briar or something would uh, uh, scratch him or something and he would bleed and I'm, the, I'm getting the same way because age is catching me. Amen. And the importance, amen, for anybody today, amen, that life is just a vapor. Amen. I can remember when I was young, and one writer said I was young and I was old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. So I've got something, amen, to come around the church for. Amen. The blessings, amen, and all those things. But there's something even more important than what we get in this life. It is salvation. To know, amen, that when we go out of this world, amen, uh, that we're ready, amen, and we got a place to go. A place. Amen. But I want to deal with some things about uh, tonight in the book of uh, 2 Peter, the third chapter. And uh, hopefully I can bring all this out. Hallelujah. Give me just a second to find that. The third chapter of the book of 2 Peter. Amen. I like, uh, you know, back, somebody mentioned this the other day that back in, uh, you know, there was a, a kind of a disagreement between Peter and uh, Paul. And Paul kind of uh, gave him a strong rebuke. Amen. People, you know, even brethren today, you re- if you give somebody some correction, amen, or some reproof, Amen. So many times their separation comes, brother. Amen. But Paul and Peter, they didn't separate over the issue, but Peter straightened his act up. Amen. And, and he writes here in one of these epistles, he talks about his beloved Paul. Amen. Even though that he had, there was strong rebuke there, amen, uh, the problem was settled. Amen. And they walked as brothers. They walked in agreement. Amen. And you know, the Bible tells us in the Old Testament, and I said, a friend is this. The Bible describes uh, to me the way I understand a friend is when two, any, any two of us can walk together and agree. Amen. That's how we can walk in true friendship. Amen. When we come into the unity, even of the faith, to agree upon the principles of God. Amen. And no divisions. The Bible speaks about divisions in the body, even in the early church. And Paul uh, was one that spoke out against divisions in the church. And we don't need division. But I thought, before we get into this today, amen, I thought even about the Jews in that time when Jesus was here. Amen. And you know, many times as the church of Jesus Christ, amen, we're, you know, we don't want to mix with the world. We don't want to mix with other organizations. We don't want to uh, mix with other things that's contrary to the Word of God, denominations and these things. We don't want our people mixing with this. Amen. But I look there, even in Jesus' time, amen, we can become so judgmental sometimes, amen, as those people, amen, as that little Samaritan woman, I believe it was, amen, where the, uh, that, uh, you know, the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. Amen. And when they seen, you know, Jesus, amen, and this woman, amen, there was all kinds of accusations. Amen. There was all kinds of thoughts. There was all kinds of divisions. But amen, He didn't come to save the, the, you know, the ones that was in safety. He come to save those that was lost. Amen. And if there's somebody in here that feels like they're lost and undone without God today, amen, you can know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. 
Amen. We, we, you know, the Bible teaches how can you hear without a preacher and how can he preach except he be sent. But you can know him. Amen. Somebody talked about the Holy Ghost the other night. Amen. When you receive the Holy Ghost, it will lead you and it will guide you and it will bring you into all truth. There's people out there. Amen. They're only walking in the light that they know. But listen, Brother Troy, it's our obligation as ministers to go out here and shed this Light of the glorious gospel to these people. Amen. Let's go to the book of Second Peter there in the third chapter. And we want to read a little bit today. I'll try not to keep you too long. I'd like to see uh, uh, the service go as it did last night. But we want it to go however God wants it to. Amen. And I said this whole, this whole conference would be worth everything if just one, amen, would get the Holy Ghost. Or if just one would come to the altar and repent of their sins. It would be worth everything. All of it. And I told somebody, I said, when we was down to Bishop Rose's, that made my day. That made my night when Sister Kim and her husband went to the altar. And we seen those tears flowing. Hey Amen. That made my day. Hey Amen. To see uh, uh, someone repent. Hey Amen. In true repentance. Hey Amen. When, when you see those tears flooding the altar. Hey Amen. That's, that's something, Brother Bo. That's, the, the Bible says the angels rejoice at something like that. Amen. But we want to get into some things tonight, and I hope this will help somebody. I hope it don't hurt anybody. Amen. But there in the in verse 1, it says, uh, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds uh, by way of remembrance. Amen. A pure mind, amen, a pure mind, not defiled with the world, not defiled, amen, with the, the cares and, the, uh, and all these things, amen. Uh, uh, sometimes, you know, we neglect uh, certain things. We neglect prayer sometimes, Brother Troy. We neglect fasting. Somebody was talking about fasting a while ago. Worship, amen, we neglect worshiping God. Amen. And what Scripture says, if you don't praise Him, He said the stones would cry out. Amen. We've got something to praise God for tonight. But listen, Peter was trying to stir up the pure minds. Pure minds by way. And he was trying to make them remember. And listen, this is what, so many times we think about what the prophets, amen, there in the Old Testament, they prophesied as Isaiah did in the ninth chapter of the book of, uh, of Isaiah. Amen. And I think it's the sixth verse. It says, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. We look at all those things about the prophecy of Jesus Christ and the Old Testament from Genesis. Amen. All all the way, amen, to the end of it is full of prophecy about Jesus Christ. But if we read this scripture here, amen, it talks at verse 2, it says that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, of uh, us the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, Looking at verse 2 just for a moment. Mindful of the words which were spoken by the holy prophets. See, they spoke about Jesus Christ. But, amen, if we get on into the Scripture, amen, it's not necessarily talking about the prophecies of Jesus Christ, but it was talking about the judgments, amen, that God was speaking about even in the Old Testament. Amen, about those in de that was walking in discipline obedience. Amen. Let's read. Verse 2 says that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord, of our Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers. Well, we can run a little reference down here and it says mockers. Amen. Walking after their own lust. Amen. And I, I want to just try to show you some things about scoffers. Man, we got people calling themselves Christians today. Amen. They're not living right. They're not acting right. They're not looking right. Not spitting right. <laughs> not even smelling right. <laughs> Amen. But calling themselves Christians, 
And I look at this word scoffer and it means mocker. Hey man, we, if we walk in disobedience, if we walk in error, we can fall into the same category as Peter's talking about as a scoffer. Not even uh, maybe as what we think of as a scoffer making fun of somebody, but by the lifestyle that people are living today, amen, they become mockers. They become scoffers. Amen, they become disobedient to the Word of God. Listen, if all the books in the world that we've, you know, people have got to read, they, many people would rather read something else Amen. Like somebody said the other day about, uh, you know, I think it was Brother Jared just talking about the different books and things. They would rather read something, amen, other than the Word of God. Amen. If it's a, a personal thing or, you know, whatever. They would rather read some book, amen, that some man has written rather than read the book. Amen. That's correct. That is inspired by God. The Bible says holy men of old Amen. Wrote this, but they was overshadowed. They was, they, there was an unction there of the Holy Ghost. It wasn't just man writing. Amen. He was just an instrument with that, maybe that quill or that, however they wrote back in those days. Amen. They was just an instrument that God was inspiring to write it down. Amen. Into that book that we read as the Bible. Amen. And I believe this Bible to be the undefiled Word of God. Amen. This Bible, the King James Version Bible. Brother Troy said something about, you know, they, they want to tr change things. They, man, they, they, they want to say, well, the le this letter wasn't there back, you know, before the King James come along, the letter J and so forth. But it amazes me what you said the other day. Amen. You look at the world map. Amen. And you look at Israel. And you look at the capital of Israel. How's come it's spelled with a J? Yet they want to take it out of our Bible. They want to take Jesus Christ away from us. Amen. They want to do these things. They become scoffers. They become mockers. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, knowing this, first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. Oh, they're mocking the Word of God. And saying, where is the promise? What's the use of coming to church? Where is the promise of His coming? Yeah, yeah. See, I, I had some intentions when I started this out to show you. Amen. Yeah. They've been saying that for years. And I know young folks. I was young once. Fortunately enough, I, amen, I spent most of my time at the altar. But, you know, I've seen, I've seen children grow up, even in the church, raised right. Brother Troy, we raised them right. We told them right. Amen. But the world, amen, for some reason, amen, the world had a tug on them. Amen. And per, by persuasion, sometimes by friends, amen, going to the public school sometimes, listening, listening to the wrong persuasion. As somebody was talking about the holiness issues of the long hair and going to school and different things like that, that struck a nerve in my body, brother, brother Bo, because I remember as a young teenager going to school, amen, uh, and my sister having long hair and the children, other ch uh, kids making fun of her because she had that long hair hair because she wore those long dresses. Hey Amen. Children, don't let, the de don't let the devil steal what God's give you. Hey Amen. He's out to kill, steal, and destroy. Hey Amen. He's not out to burn Portage, Indiana down, but He's, he's here, hey Amen, in the city of Portage, Indiana to destroy lives. He's here to destroy souls. He's here to tell you that, well, there's nothing down there at the church of Jesus Christ worth going for. But this is the place, hey Amen, that God has chosen as Brother Randall and many of the other preachers has preached. This is a place that God chose in Portage, Indiana to place His name. Name. Amen. And it's a, it's, it's a place we need to keep holy. Amen. We need to keep this thing going. The Bible says in saying, where is the promise of His coming? What's the use of going to church? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. 
For they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth which are now. This is the reason we need to come to church. Amen. This is the reason we need salvation. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved into fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promises. Amen. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance amen this is the reason we need a place amen this is the reason we need an altar amen we need some place amen to cry out in repentance to God Lord here I am a wretched sinner amen that's looking for you amen Brother uh, Troy or somebody said today, you know, God don't hear that sinner that's, amen, that's not in that repentant state. But He hears when somebody's heart is contrite and broken. Amen. He'll save you. He'll heal you. Amen. He'll give you the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you'll just obey His Word. Amen. When I obey the Word of God, God give it. Amen. When we obey this Word, God will give it to us. Amen. I want you to keep this in mind. Mindful of these words that were spoken by the prophets. Amen. One of the first places, and we may come back here just for uh, in a few minutes to, to, uh, to keep that marked. Let's go to the book of Jude just for a second. One of the first places in the Bible, amen, that a prophet speaks is found in the book that was written way down through time. In the book of Jude. Huh? What well, you say, Bro- Brother Jim, how could it be written in Jude and you can't find it in the Old Testament? Watch this. Let's go down. Let's read just a little bit. Amen. In the book of Jude. I don't want to read it all, but... The uh, Bible's trying to show us about judgment. It says, verse 7, it says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignity. Yet Michael, the archangel, amen, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. <laughs> I tell you what, when the Lord rebukes something, amen, it's rebuked. Amen. When the, and I'll tell you, what, I preached a message, I think here the last time I was here, amen, about hell enlarging itself. Amen. And how that God gave Peter the keys, amen, to the kingdom. Amen. And he was able to bind things. And able, amen, he was able to loose things. Amen. Sometimes, you know, it's, uh, the Bible speaks about calling upon the elders of the church and anointing them with oil. But sometimes it's good to get a hold of something that's wrong and curse it. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's good. Cancer. I want to I wanna come back to this. Cancer. Probably every family here has dealt with that disease in their families. We're living in a time. It's taken a lot of our family members out. I un- my understanding, this is my understanding, that cancer, hey man, it's, it's cells that invade the body. And it's a separate organism that's trying to take over the body. It's trying to kill the good cells. Amen. It's a living organism. 
Amen. And the only way, amen, that that organism can be killed is by the name of Jesus Christ when it's cursed. Did you ever think about that? We have power to bind things, to loose things. Amen. Our power comes. Amen. As Peter and John, amen. And that crippled man, I believe it was, if I'm right, amen. The power comes in the name of Jesus Christ. We've got to get our faith back. Praise God. There's nothing. Brother, somebody said the other day, there's nothing impossible with God when the the impossibility sometimes is in our unbelief. Amen. Uh, Brother Troy spoke to me the other day, or maybe it was the last time I seen him, about healing that he's seen in his lifetime. We've all, many of us older folks have seen things. I've seen cancers healed. Amen. I've seen blinded eyes open. I've seen deaf ears open. Amen. I've never seen the dead raised, but I believe it's possible. Brother Troy said he's seen it there the other night when he was preaching. He said he's seen the dead come back. All things are possible with God if we can only believe, if we can only trust in God and know what power the church of Jesus Christ really has and be able to demonstrate this power. Amen. He said the power of His might. Praise Him. We've got to have that power. That power only comes, amen, from pulling back from this flesh, from fasting, amen, from pr- in prayer, amen, with, you know, with Jesus, amen, when it, He fasted, He prayed, and He was God in the flesh. He set down an example for us. Amen. It's easy to sit around sometimes and, 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 and eat and have, you know, our meals. I get with Brother Spence, I get fat. <laughs> But it's easy to do that. But it's hard, amen, to push that meal back. Amen. Or two meals or three meals or three days or seven days or 15 days. It's a hard thing for this old flesh to take those things. But I have known men of God, amen, that would push that plate back. Amen. And I believe this. If you'll do that, you can do the very same things that the early church was doing. Amen. And you'll, there'll be a different understanding. Amen. By the Spirit of God, because you've cleared the carnality up where you're no longer looking through the carnality towards things, but you're in that spiritual realm. Amen. That you can see the things of God and see the power of God. We got to get back to that. Listen, I know a man who can. <laughs> Amen. If he done it, we can do it. Praise God. Amen. Let's go to the book of Jude just for a second. And where, where was we? Verse, verse 9. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. Be careful what you say about the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may not understand that you're speaking against God. Amen. You're speaking against His body here on the, in earth. Oh yes, He has a body today. It's you. It's you believers. It's ones that's, amen, standing for that name that's repented, filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in His precious name, took His name on. You wear His name. We stand for His name in every action, in every way that we do. We are examples to this world. Amen. But the Bible says, But they speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things. They corrupt themselves. That's the reason we... Uh, that veil that's within us. Amen. There's a veil there of the flesh. Amen. We got to be able to get a past that veil, Brother Bo. Amen. To be get a good spiritual insight into being able to walk the way God wants us to walk. Right. Yes. I, believe it. I believe that. 
Yet I know, amen, many times out here on the field, amen, preaching, even at the home, you know, when we was having church at home, amen, many times, amen, you know, you preach, Brother Troy, you've been there, you, you'll preach a message and you know God's in it, and then, you know, you may go to bed that night or the next day and that old tempter comes along and you have to fight that old devil, amen. Sometimes some of the most beautiful things in church that happens when God anoints, amen, and then you walk outside, amen, after that message is went forth, and that old devil's right there to ride you. Amen. That old devil's right there to tear you down. Amen. That devil's right there to take you away from that blessing. Amen. I know what I'm talking about. I've been there. Praise God. As a young man, I didn't know what it was like. And I heard preachers say, Amen. Uh, go home from a, maybe a week's revival or be preaching, you know, and seeing people healed and seeing people come to the altar, different things like that. And said, you know, go home and then have to wrestle with the devil all night. I've been there. Amen. Amen. Because when you do those, when you do those things, you got the devil mad. Amen. He's right there. Amen. But watch this. It says, uh, verse 11 says, Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. These are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds. Trees whose fruit withereth without fruit twice dead plucked up by the roots raging waves of the sea foaming out their own shame wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever but listen to this this is what I was wanting to get to amen Enoch, one of the first ones in the Bible that we find a prophet of God. It's not recorded in the Old Testament, but it's recorded right here. Amen. It says, and Enoch also. He was the seventh from Adam. He was a prophet of God. You say, what are you talking about being a prophet of God? Listen, he prophesied. Praise Him. Now, so, now they take the... They take one of the books that's not contained in the Bible, they call it the book of Enoch, and they base a, do a doctrine that Enoch was prophesying about the flood. Is that right, Brother Bishop Spence? But listen, he was talking about the very end time. Prove it. Amen. Read the Scripture. And Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of His saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which... God ungodly sinners have spoken against Him. Scoffers. Mockers. I mean, speaking against Jesus Christ. Listen, this is a serious thing tonight. Hey Amen. When you walk, when you, when you come to church, hey amen, and you feel the presence of God. I'm talking about when God's drawn and you're feeling it. And you come to the altar sometimes, and sometimes people won't even come to the altar. They'll come in, they'll feel, the, they'll feel God. But the, the, for some reason, there's something, brother, amen, out there in the world that's tugging on them. And it just keeps tugging on them. And it just keeps tugging on them. And it just keeps tugging on them. Before you know it, they're right back out into the world. Hey Amen. But you know, I was taught as a little boy, and I heard somebody preaching about this weekend, this weekend about the Holy Ghost. That's that's what. Hey Amen. If you come to the altar and repent of your sins, you need the Holy Ghost, and it's promised to each and every one if they will obey the Word of God. The reason we come to church. It's not to serve Him. 
Many's got it in their mind. The reason we come to church, we serve Him here at church. We come into the house of God with praise and thanksgiving to worship God. Amen. To listen to the Word of God. But when we leave this place, amen, that's where we serve Him. As Christians, when we go out those doors, amen, we're witnesses to those, Sister Marilyn, that's uh, maybe our neighbor. Amen. Maybe somebody we meet at Walmart. Amen. Wherever we're at, we're witnesses. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord. Amen. We come in here, Brother Bo, to praise Him, to worship Him. Hallelujah. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving. Amen. If we get those things on our mind instead of the world, amen, instead of thinking about, well, I've come to church to serve God. I've had people tell me, amen, the reason I come to church was to sing. Amen, the reason I come to church was for a certain purpose. But the reason that we come to church, amen, the Bible says, first of all, it says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as you see the day approaching. Amen, that day is upon us. Amen. There's a lot of people, amen, that have left the church. Amen. But my 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 mind and my my spirit goes out to those that are lost and undone without God tonight. Amen. And as Christians, we got to get back, amen, to loving people. Amen. I love my family. And I, you know, I was thinking about this last night as I was kneeling down over there and I was crying for my grandbabies. I was crying for my children, brother. Amen. Because God has put a love in, into my, my life. Amen. For my children, for my wife, for my brothers, for my sisters. Amen. And God has put a love in my heart for my neighbors. Amen. Amen. We ought to even have a love for our enemies. Oh, I can't love them. Brother Randy, I can't love that fellow that been persecuting me all week. So that's, a, that's an attitude we get a lot of times. Somebody talking ill against you. The, even the church. Amen. I spoke there the other day about a preacher, amen, that come against me. I mean, known him all of my life. I told Bishop Spence about this. Amen. Known him for all my life. I grew up around the man. At one time, I believe he was a good man, but somewhere down the line, he listened to this and he listened to that. Amen. And before you know it, he's he's uh, just about Trinity. He was just about Trinity by some of the doctrines that he was teaching. Amen. And one one uh, I guess it was about two years ago, he, or a year and a half ago, he come out to the church. Amen. He come into the church, and I wouldn't let him behind the platform because I knowed he was in error. Amen. So he wanted to talk after church, and me and another minister began to talk to him, and he wanted to tell us about some of his doctrines, which I heard him time and time and time again. And amen. I I asked him a few questions about his doctrine, and he started getting mad because he couldn't answer the questions. Amen. And I know back years ago, so I asked him some of the same questions, and he got mad, and he said, "You're just dumb and you're ignorant." Amen. But that night, but that night, brother, I told you about this. Amen. That night, amen, as we walked out, amen, on the porch. And I know he was a little red-faced, amen, because he was in disagreement, amen, with the church of Jesus Christ, amen, with, uh, with some of the things that we teach, amen. And, and uh, as he walked out, amen, he wasn't mad yet, but he was red-faced. And I, I, as he got ready to leave, I put my hand over him in his hand, and I said with a gentle voice, I said, listen, Brother Roger, I said, I love you with all my heart, amen. But I said, listen, you can talk about me all you want to, you can come again me all you want to, but you be careful when you come against the Word of God. Amen. As we was going to Parkersburg just here a few weeks ago, amen, as I started on the journey, about 50 miles from our house, I know exactly where he lived. And I thought, I was thinking about him. And I, you know, my heart's desire is not to see anybody lost. But God told me, God told me to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. You know, the thought come to my mind that you were to stop. But why would I stop after two or three witnesses that I had preached to Him? I had spoken to Him. Amen. People that don't even believe you have to speak in tongues anymore to get the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
People that believe you don't no longer have to dress right. Amen. The Bible says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Amen. The Bible says, come out from among them and be ye separate. Hallelujah. As I passed by, the Lord spoke to me and said, go on. Got to Parkersburg, I think it was on Sunday morning. Preached that morning there for Brother Seabog and preached that evening for Brother Seabog. And he wanted me to stay over to Tuesday. And I think it was Monday morning. Amen. I just happened to turn my phone on and Facebook popped up. And here it was on Facebook. He had died that day. Amen. And I didn't realize he had been eaten up with cancer. Amen. It started in his kidneys. They removed his kidneys and went all the way to his brain. Amen. You've got to be careful when you speak against God. You can speak against a man all you want to, but when you speak against God, you are on dangerous ground. When you speak about the Word, amen, and you run down the Word, you scoff the Word, you mock the Word, amen, when you speak about the church, amen, and you mock the church and you scoff against the church, you're on dangerous ground. The judgments of God are set against you. Praise Him. But listen, as we preached about the message, hey amen, here's uh, several places. Brother Spence has been with me. Hell hath enlarged itself. Because hell hath enlarged herself back here in the Old Testament because of the disobedience of the children of Israel. Hey Amen. This generation, hell is enlarging itself today because people are walking in disobedience. We may be few in number, but that's all right. Hey Amen. As long, hey Amen, as God is in it, that's all that counts. Hey Amen. If there's just two or three of us left, that's if we may Make it to heaven. It's going to be. That's the reason we gather together. Amen. To to uh, uh, the Bible says it's a pressing way. We have to press our way into this. And listen, one is good, but two's better. Amen. Two's good, but three's better. Amen. Amen. Three's good, but four's better. Amen. And when we come together, the Bible speaks about unity. Amen. There in the Old Testament, it speaks about Mount Hermon. And it talks about the dew that settled upon Mount Hermon. Amen. And how that the tributaries begin to form as it come off of that great mountain. Amen. And the Bible st- talks about how it refers to that uh, making a great river Euphrates. And it talks about the unity of God's people if they'll come together. Amen. And agree and walk together. Right. Unity. Amen. Amen. Everybody's wanting a name. Everybody's wanting a crown. Everybody's wanting something. Amen. But we could go to the book of Revelations and show you those 20 and 30 elders. Amen. That had the crowns. They had a crown. Every one of them, Sister Katie, had a crown. But man, there was only one that was worthy to wear it. Amen. And them elders cast their crowns before Him and began to cry, Holy, holy, holy. He was the only one that's worthy. And the Bible speaks about worthy is the Lamb. Amen. He's the only one worthy to wear the crown. Amen. The church of Jesus Christ. Amen. We give our honor. We give our glory to Him. Because He's the only one. Amen. That knows how to do things right. Praise God. Sometimes we got some good ideas, don't we? But God knows how to do everything right. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I ain't taking too much time, am I? Let's go down just a few more verses. It says, verse 15 and his... Let's see. Get back here. Verse 16. These are murmurs, complainers walking after their own lust. And their mouths speak, speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But beloved, remember ye the words. Here we go again. But... Re- Beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. Who should walk after their own ungodly lust? These be they that separate themselves. Sensual and having not the Spirit. Separation comes in or something wrong. Amen. 
Bible speaks, amen, in the book of 1 John, I believe it is, about the spirit of error. Amen. When we begin to separate ourselves, amen, from the body, amen, we become sensuous. We have not the love of God. We don't even have the Spirit. The Spirit's not going to take you away from the body of Christ. Hallelujah. But many through the years have separated. I don't know how many different organizations they say is in the church of Jesus Christ now, but there's only one church. Amen. There's one down in the southern part of the United States that says the churches, but there's only one church of Jesus Christ. And we're all members of that one body. One body. Amen. And I, you, can, you, <laughs> you can do what you want to, but I'm going I'm to stay in the book. Amen. What the book tells me, amen, is how I'm going to live. Amen. What the book dictates to me is how, what I'm going to preach. Amen. What God inspires, amen. He's inspired this word. And when I read that word, when I study that word, when He, ins- he puts that inspiration into me, I'm going to preach that word. Praise Him. Preach the word. Hallelujah. Let's go back just for a second. I won't be up here too much longer. Amen. Let's go back to 2 Peter just for a minute. Hallelujah. Verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning His promise. Don't say promises, it's His promise. As some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all, that sinner out there. I've often preached, I remember a few years ago, preaching on the street down in Covington, Kentucky. Amen. Party town. Oh, I know you got some party towns in Florida, but Covington has always been the party town of Kentucky. Newport, Covington. Hey, man, on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there's always a party going on in Covington. Hey, man. But I remember... Amen. Preaching in that little storefront with a wireless mic. Seeing them people as that door was open because there wasn't no air conditioning. I seen them people walking up and down them streets. Amen. And I remember what God began to speak to me. And I walked out through those doors and I began to preach on this street. Amen. I'm going to take this gospel to the lost. Amen. Amen. It's been in the house long enough. It's time we take this to the lost. Amen. The ones, amen, that's in need of salvation. That one that's without God tonight. That one that maybe don't know what repentance is. Amen. They need to hear about repentance tonight. Amen. That one that needs the Holy Ghost. It's for you. Amen. That one that needs to go down in the name of Jesus Christ and bury those sins in that watery grave. It's for you today. Amen. If you've never obeyed the plan of God, it's for you. Amen. What did, uh, what did, uh, I believe it was Peter, amen. He said, amen. He said, this is, he says, for you and for your children and for all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Listen, there's a lot of men calling people, but when God calls, when God speaks, amen, conviction will come in because they know, amen, that it's God. Amen. I tell people, you know, I've told people before, amen, I don't want to be a preacher that I'm the only one that feels what I've got. Amen. I want someone else to be able to feel and receive what I've got. If I've got God, I want somebody, hey, as you were singing last night and as you was preaching, what was it yesterday, amen? Amen. That was God manifesting to us through you. Amen. I was feeling something. I don't know about anybody else, but this isn't just something we feel, young men, as our, uh, as we're the only one who feels it. You'll find out, amen, when God really begins to work on you, you'll look back and you'll see somebody with tear in her eye. Amen, you might see somebody at the altar crying and weeping. Hey, as it was the other night, seeing somebody, amen, seeking for the Holy Ghost. Amen, we need to get back to preaching the gospel of of Jesus Christ, seeing the conviction come back into people's lives. Hallelujah. He called me to preach the gospel. Not my gospel, His gospel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the day, verse 10. This is the reason you need to come to church. 
But the day of the Lord will. I ain't going to have nobody's blood on my hands tonight. Will come as a thief in the night. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. And the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God. Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to His promise look for a new heavens and new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Lord, I want to make it. I've come too far down the journey now. Amen. To miss it. Praise God. Calamities, wars, pestilence. Will you look at the world news to, when you go home? Wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, homosexuality running rampant. Sexuality running rampant. Not just homosexual, but the sexuality that sucks our children out of the church. See, matrimony, in matrimony, things are honorable before God. But when you go outside of matrimony, it's not honorable. Amen. We've got children going down those roads. We've got to be able to reach them. An old preacher has been preaching 60, probably 60 years. I've said this several places. Assembly of God preacher that was converted after 60 years of preaching in the Assembly of God. He told me, he said, Brother Jim, he said, there's nothing wrong with preaching about hell. The old preachers used to preach about how hot hell was. And he said, if I'm doing wrong, preach to me about hell. But he said, when you, when you get me down there, he said, be able to pull me out of the clutches of hell. By the Word of God. See, sometimes we put people in hell, but do we have the power? Yes. Peter had the power to pull those. He said, Amen. He could, uh, you know, hell is a terrible place. And it's not going to be eternal. It's not going to be the last place you're going to spend eternity if you're, uh, if you're a sinner. But it says, death and hell shall be cast into the fire, that lake of fire that's going to burn forever and ever. People don't want to hear this. And ever and ever and ever. Just as eternity in heaven will be forever and ever and ever, that lake of fire is going to be forever and forever and forever. Eternal punishment. I've said it before, Brother Troy, I wouldn't want to see a little dog go there. Why would I want to see a human being going there? But we got ministers, we got, we've got multitudes, we've got millions of people in this world today that's dying, lost, without Jesus Christ. Hey Amen. Is that blood going to be upon our heads? Bishop Spence was talking about, hey amen, he's talked about so many times going outside of the walls. Hey amen. It don't mean we have to move the church. Hey amen. It don't mean we have to change our doctrine. Hey amen. We can go back into the Old Testament and find where they, they took their tent stakes. Hey amen. And they put them out a little bit farther so they, they would have, they, and I look at it this way. If we expand our tent stakes, we can win more people to the kingdom of God. But what we, what we want to do? Just sit here in a little four walls? A lot of people do. But I want to be able to reach the lost. Praise God. And I know, Brother Troy, you, when you're witnessing the people out on the job, I know the type of man you are. You witness the people. You pray for people. And it's a hard time. 
But God loves you. No matter where you come from. So a lot of times we get in our cliques and think, well, you know, this guy ain't got a nice job. He's just a bum down on Skid Row. But that bum down on Skid Row's got human blood flowing through them just like you and me. It could be me. It could be you that's down there on Skid Row. Amen. And He's the same God, amen, up here in Portage, Indiana as He is down on Skid Row. Amen. He's the same God. Somebody was talking about, uh, I don't know what city it was, Memphis, I think it was. Somebody was telling me about Memphis today. He said, you, you go down there, Brother uh, Peter, somebody. Amen. Brother Johnny, they was talking about Memphis. Amen. You go down there and there's, there's slums down there. But even the old uh, shanties and stuff's got bars on the window because they're afraid somebody's going to break in or maybe going to kill them or something. But God's concerned about that one down on Skid Row just as much as He is in that one that lives in Portage, Indiana. Amen. You look at the time Jesus walked here. Amen. Oh, many preachers today would condemn Jesus. Amen. Just like the Pharisees did when He was out there trying to win the lost. He's eating with the publican. Amen. The sinners... Oh, he went everywhere. He went into their places of worship. But he was just looking. He had come for the lost sheep of Israel. Hey, Amen. The Bible says if the princes would have known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Hey, Amen. If they would have known that he was who he was, they wouldn't have crucified him. Hey, Amen. Those mockers and scoffers today. Hey, Amen. But, you know. I think about this, when you're mocking the church, when you're coming against this gospel, I mean, when you scoff against this, you're, you're, you know, you may not have the knowledge to know, just like those princes did. They didn't have the knowledge to know who Jesus Christ was. And you, you know, there's a lot of people don't have the knowledge today to know who Jesus Christ is. But God has got a messenger in this end time. And it's called the church of Jesus Christ. And it's time that the church of Jesus Christ come alive. Hey man, get out there and preach the word. Hey man, Brother Troy hit on this when he was preaching. I believe it was when he was preaching about the Godhead. Amen. First John, if you want to, we can turn there. As you said the other day, so often we quote scriptures when we could probably read them. Actually, let's go to St. John, first of all. Chapter 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was, and it talks about there was a man sent from John, or called John. But I want you to think, about these scriptures just for a minute. Speaking about Enoch. Amen. That was before, amen, what? The flood. Do we find any written word before the flood other than Moses forward? The books of Moses forward. Do we find anything other, other than maybe Jude speaking about that? Well, Moses spoke about the flood, t spoke about the time of the flood, but there was no written, what we know today in a language. There was nothing written down that we know of. Amen. But the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word. Amen. In the beginning was the Word. Somebody mentioned this the other day. That spoken Word. That living Word. Hey man, see what we got to understand tonight. Many times we read this scripture, and sometimes we don't understand. But when it come, becomes alive by the Holy Ghost, 
Amen. It's no longer that written word, but it becomes alive inside of us. Amen. When we digest it. Amen. When it comes alive. Amen. And we, we walk in, in, in the word. That same word that was in the beginning that created all things. Amen. And I've, I've said this explaining the Godhead, Brother, Brother Troy. Amen. The best way that I ever uh, found to explain the Word of God was it was the manifestation. Amen. Just as you hear me speak, uh, the sound that comes forth, that Word, amen, was the very manifestation. It was the very sound of God. Amen. It wasn't the second or third person in the Godhead, but it was God in His voice coming forth. The Word of God. Amen. It's powerful. The Bible says it's powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen. And that Word is here tonight to heal. That Word is here tonight to save. Hallelujah. I can remember a time. I love music. I love to play music, but I ain't good as some of these boys are. But I always, growing up, I loved music, brother. I loved it. But it don't take music to give you the Holy Ghost. It takes God. It takes that Word. Hey, man, it's been preached here. You need the Holy Ghost. If you've repented of your sins, you need the Holy Ghost. You need to tarry for it. You need to find it. It's promised to you. Hallelujah. God is real tonight. Just a few more things. John. First John. Let's go over there just for a minute. We're going to finish up real quick. But Spence saves me for last. That's all right. Look what the witness is First John has. Verse 1, it says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard. Which we have seen with our eyes. Which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the Word of life. Word of life. Say it again, Brother Spence. Word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly, listen, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write, we unto you that your joy may be full. Amen. That's the reason we need the church. Amen. That's the reason we need one another. Amen. So our joy can be full. Amen. That's the reason we're in need of salvation. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Man, oh man, that'd make you shout. Brother Peter, I tell you, that makes me feel go good to know the joy of the Lord is my strength. Old devil's there to put the pout in you. He's there to make you mad. But the joy of the Lord is where we get our strength. Hey man, God is real tonight. Bishop Spence comes. How many enjoyed that? Say amen. Praise the Lord. That was a good message. That word, and that word is alive. It's got life. It is life. Amen. Let's all stand. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to ask them to come and give us a song, and it is time to pray. Amen. God can do a lot right here tonight. Amen. We, we love you. We appreciate you. We thank you for being here at this, this conference. Amen. And if we don't get a chance afterwards, man. Uh, to say anything else, we, we thank you, and we pray you'll have a good, safe trip home. But let's pray. Amen. Come on.